Yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Uh, please press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, it was some, some good feelings that happens in prisons, yeah? Or, well, one of the best feelings that happens in prison is when uh, you're in your cell, what, in the afternoon, m mostly in the afternoon, it's usually in the afternoon anyway, and they're knocking the door. Get your kit back, mate, you're going home. How's that feeling? That's the greatest feeling in the world. One minute you've, you've in your cell, you can't imagine being home, and the next minute, bang, 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 you're going out. It's just like that, mate. It's, it's unbelievable, that feeling, you know? You just can't believe it. You know, it's mad. And uh, and, and I've, got, um, I've got a guy on my podcast here. He's a nice, nice guy. I met him in prison. Uh, he's a screw, but he's a nice, he was a nice screw. He's a proper, proper gentleman, you know what I mean? And uh, he sometimes does comments on my on my uh, on my on my podcast, and he was saying, "Well, I remember um, in Albany uh, when we clicked George Davis's door in the afternoon, clicked his door, and he knew he got he won the appeal. He knew that he would won the appeal, but he wasn't quite sure uh, when when he was going to be released and what day he's going to be, be released. He's waiting for his barristers or, or and the solicitors to come up and see him." to see what they were saying about it. And uh, we clicked his door, and uh, we, they said, Jules, get your kit, your kit pack, mate, you're going home. And the screw was saying to me, he said, Jules Davis, the feet, the, his face, he said, changed it over, he said, one minute it was old, it was an old looking face, the next minute it was not a child. It just lit up, yeah? He said, when he was get, he left everything in his cell, everything, he never took nothing, all he took was his letters, yeah? And he, Everything, he was going home, knocking people's doors, he was going, yeah, I'm going home, I'm going home, I want my pill, I'm going home. And there was all, everyone was shouting and crashing, because this was in the afternoon, everybody's banged up yet. Yeah. Everyone's crashing the doors, well, I'm trying George. And we're all smashing the doors, <laughs> everybody's, everybody's smashing the doors, you know what I mean? And George just like, went to some of the people that he was uh, with, I think he went to, um, who was it anyway? It doesn't matter who it was at this time. He went to a certain uh, con cell and he was shouting out, I've let, I've got my appeal. Listen, I've left everything in my cell. Take it, it's all yours, everything. The food, record players, radios. You know, it's a kind of lunatic, you know what I mean? I'm going home. You can imagine that, can't you, that feeling? And I reckon uh, when he was walking down the, uh, the walkway, uh, in Albany, uh, you, you've got a, a long, long walkway, yeah? And it's got like E wing, D wing, C wing. It goes on like that, yeah? You've got C wing, B wing, A wing, it goes on, yeah? It's a long walkway, and you come up to the top, and you do a left, you go down the stairs uh, by the gym, and you go out onto the, onto the main through the reception, and then you go down and walk down the hill to the gate, yeah? And it's like, it, it's a fence. I should imagine it must be a fantastic walk to walk out of Albany Prison. It must be the greatest walk ever, you know, because when you come in Albany Prison, you walk up that, you drive up, that's the only time you ever get to, 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 to see that walkway. You drive up, you know, you do right and you go into reception. And you, when you go to exercise, you always see it, you know what I mean? You always look down to the gate and you think, oh, one day. I'm going through that gate, yeah? And you can imagine how he feels. Yeah? And um, Jules, if reckon his face uh, really lit up. He couldn't, it was all panicking and shaking. You know, he's in a right bad way, you know what I mean? Because he's look at, look like he's a big bit of bird, you know what I mean? And, uh, and then he said, he walked out the gate and it was all waiting for him, banners, everything. Jules Davis is free and all that. <laughs> Outside the gate, yeah, Jules Davis is free. And, and, uh, and, and, and like I can, you can imagine, can't you, being on the ferry? Um, he must have got his sort of pissed on the ferry and going across the waters to Portsmouth or wherever he goes to, Southampton or wherever it goes to. Um, it was must have been a fantastic feeling to walk out that gate like that, yeah. And fair play to George, you know what I mean? Like he won it, he won his day. Everybody stuck by him. Uh, they painted everything, everything in England. Everything was painted, everything, trees, the lot, yeah. George Davis is innocent, and then he gets Nixon <laughs> on and on, which is, which is a bit mad, yeah, but it's what George did, you know, and I mean, everybody everybody has that feeling. Um, you imagine, um, you imagine uh, when, uh, George, uh, who's, who's, I forget the guy's name, uh, 
There's one, George, I, know, I remember George Wilkinson, I think George Wilkinson done it, yeah. Uh, the guy in Fighting for, for, for Your Life, the, I'm in a book called Fighting for Your Life, I've just told you before. I think George Wilkinson is about the only one uh, that walked down to the gate in Albany, and uh, they, I think it was Albany or Parkhurst, and, and they all jumped in. Just as he got nearly gate, there, everyone just, was on him, you know what I mean? I mean, imagine walking down to the gate thinking, you ain't going there, where are you going to go, you know what I mean? And they all pounced on him, and George Davis, later on, they killed him, yeah. Uh, they done him. But it is a good feeling. I mean, we've all had it. Uh, I remember uh, on a, I was on a bad case, and uh, I was going up to, to, to the uh, central, the big courts, uh, the appeal courts on the Strand, and... I was up for a really, really bad charge from Brixton Prison. And I went up there and I was in front of the three judges. And uh, and I had a good, good, good QC at that time. You know, and they, they were all argument, big arguments. And one of the judges, I think it was Abdullah. I'm sure it was, I think it was Abdullah, I'm not quite sure. And one of the judges uh, said, I think this man shouldn't be in prison. This man should be on bail. He should be released uh, immediately. Uh, he's got a, a, my, my granddad stood bail for me, a couple of grand, that was a long time ago, you know, he stood bail for me. And he gets a release from the appeal from the appeal court, it's another fantastic feeling. You don't get released straight away, you go downstairs to the cell, and you're shitting yourself, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, everyone, it, you never know if, they, if they're going to uh, uh, change their minds and all that, yeah. Even, I remember a good feeling uh, when I was in Mason, I finished a I'm finishing off a big, big sentence, yeah. A big, it's crazy, that, it's crazy to think, yeah. You know the next day you're going out, you're getting, you're getting released, but you just can't believe it. You just, it's a feeling, it's a funny feeling. You've done 10 years or whatever you've done, 12 years of, uh, in prison, yeah. And that day comes for you to be released, but it's in the morning. So you're waking up at what, four o'clock, five o'clock, you can't sleep. And you're looking out the window, you look out the window and look at the look at look at the, look this look at the skyline and the tr and the trees maybe you see trees over the fence if you don't all you can see is the wall and the fence and all the barbed wire and all that stuff and the, the hook present that goes over the wall and all that you know you're looking out and you're going to yourself I'm going out in a minute and you're waiting and waiting and waiting all of a sudden you can hear the screws walking up the landing and the keys jingling you know that's the first thing you hear the keys. And uh, you think, or you head, head downstairs, the, the gate go crash, you know, and you, and all chatting downstairs, and, you're, and, and and you just you can't believe it that they're coming to your door after you've done maybe ten years, twelve years in prison. They're coming to your door, and you're going to be released. It's mad. It's it, it doesn't seem possible. It, you know, you just can't believe it. You think something's going to happen. We all the same, you know. You can't believe it, and they come in. You got your gear, mate. You're ready to go. It's like as if you've never been in prison. It's like he's never been in prison the way they talk to you, you know what I mean? You ready to go, mate? And you're walking down the lane and saying goodbye to everybody, you know what I mean? Or go and see your pals, yeah. I'll send you some money and everybody's after the money. Yeah, I'll send you some money and I'll do the, the old crash. You've got all the numbers and the names and went before. And uh, you're walking down the lane, down the stairs, and you, and you, you go to the, you, and you just can't believe it. And you get in reception, you get all your clothes, and it's like you're panicking, isn't it? You don't know. You don't know. You don't know if you're not going to get out. You know, you panic. You just panic. You've got nothing to panic about. You ain't done nothing. But in the mind, you can't help it. You know what I mean? And you're thinking, Am I going to get out of here? Am I going to walk out that gate? Yeah. And you walk out that gate, and you think, oh, It's freedom. You know what I mean? And you can't believe that you've been in that place. You've been in there because. When you walk around, even when you walk, I mean, I live near the scrubs. I did live near the scrubs, yeah. And I used to sometimes go to the scrubs common and train around the scrubs common, yeah. I run around there, and it's all right, a little run, yeah. And, uh, and then go run all the way back home to hunt my house, my house in Acton. And uh, I used to sometimes walk around the scrubs. It takes you, what, maybe half an hour to walk around it. 25, 30 minutes, something like that, yeah? And you walk around it and you think to yourself, do you know what? I lived in that place for a long time. 
How did I live in there? It's madness, that feeling, you, you, you can't believe it, that you, you live, you live in that place. How? You know, there's nowhere to go. You've got a little shell, you've got a landing, and you live it like that. And you, and you come out, it's a big, wide, open world, a massive, great big space. You can't believe it, you come out and you think, oh, this is huge, man. And yet, all you've been doing is walking around a little yard, you know, and going into, into your wing, a little landing, and into your cell. And that's it. And you're walking around that, walking around that, that scrubs here, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, there's X amount of people in there now. There could be 1,400 people in that prison, 2,000 people in that prison. How? In that short, in that little space. You know, and then you look, and then you think to yourself, there's people in there now, in this seg unit, yeah, in the unit, getting bashed to pieces, yeah, getting jabbed up, getting jabbed up, and getting smashed to pieces, you know what I mean? And you can't believe it. They can't, there's no one in, there's no one else. It's a, it's a different world. Believe it's a different world. You've got your chief, you've got your, it's, it's no different to what it is out here, really. But your big wall is stopping you from getting out, and it's, you've got your chief, your governors, you've got the screws that are normal people, you know, and you've got the chief, the governors that run the nick, you know, and, and, and there's you. It's, it's crazy, man. It's a, it's a funny old world. It's a funny old world, and it's, uh, and it's, not, it's only a certain amount of people that live that world, that live it, you know. And there's lots of people uh, that come on, on, on these podcasts, and people that would love to know what it's like, and they can't imagine what it's like to be in prison, you know. And it's, believe me, it's mad. It's, it, I mean, Matt, the amount of people that, that are in prison become institutionalised, yeah? Become so institutionalised that they can't live, they can't survive out on the road. Because in prison, everything, and I mean everything, is done for you. Everything, the time you eat, the time you sleep, the time you get up, everything is done for you, yeah? Like out here in the real world, you've got to do your own thinking. You've got to do your own thing. No one does it for you. You've got to cook your own food. You know, everything. You know what I mean? You've got to earn your own money. But in prison, you earn your own, they earn your money for you, yeah? They give you money. And they're giving you food. They give you somewhere to sleep. You know, and they, you know, and, and, and you survive. You survive on them. And there's a lot in there that can't get out of prison and live because they have what you call institutionalised. They've got to go back to prison. It's mad. I mean, I'm, a couple of my mates, my, my, my mates of mine, uh, KRN TV, uh, my, my mate Christian, he's telling me that sometimes he does a lot of interviews, Christian, loads. I mean, he's got a good channel, Christian, yeah? Christian Morgan, KRN TV, got loads and loads of people he talks to. And he sometimes tells me that some of the people that he interviews are institutionalised, that, that, that that want to go back, that f say to him, it's better, I'm better off in there, mate, than I am on the street. Because they're always thinking about uh, maybe getting back, being put in back there. They're better off be staying in there and they can't sleep at night, thinking the door's going to smash him for something they'd done 20 years ago or 10 years ago. It's, it's, it's that feeling, you know. Yeah, I can understand that. And, and, and it is a good, I mean, even me, yeah, I can, I mean, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable, but I can come into my, into this place, uh, sometimes, I get a f funny feeling that I can just sit down on, on the settee, no telly, no telly, just turn the lights off, well, don't turn the lights off, the lights are already off, yeah, and, and I can sit down there and just drift, I suppose it's like an astral projection, you know, you're just drifting. You're not even, and, 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 and before you know it, it's one o'clock, two o'clock at night, you know, and, and you think, Christ, I've been sitting here like this for fucking six, six hours, seven hours, and it's gone. The night's gone. You're thinking, crikey, not the night, but it, it's all gone, you know what I mean? You think, what have I done? I ain't done nothing. I'm just sat here, and I don't really drift, you know, and that's what happens when, when you're in prison. You know, it's like, it's, it, what he does to you is mad. You know, and, and big people have done big, big bird. You know, imagine, I mean, come on. 
try and imagine that feeling. Try and imagine that it must be the best feeling you can in the world, yeah? Even if you're institutionalised, but it must be the greatest feeling in the world, even to try it, yeah, to get out. Uh, this is why... Um, this is why they got, they got prisons, like, I think it's Oxford, uh, old prisons, where they let people go in there and uh, see what prison is about, yeah? Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea that people go into these old prisons and see what prison cell is about, yeah? And so let people see, maybe, I don't know how they do it, you know, but they maybe let people see how people should live by, by, you know, by camera and this, that and the other, or, or what videos over, you know, over the years and bits and bits and show them how prison really was. Because believe it or not, yeah, um, my mate Harry Haywood uh, and Billy Haywood, I mean, I've said it before, but I'll say it again, they had a cell downstairs in the pub, in the Harp and Herring, a cell, yeah, where they made a cell, a proper prison cell, uh, bricks and a door, and not a prison door, obviously so, you know, you know, but a door, and go in there and get locked in. And you're locked in that place, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I can't have this, mate. I can't, if anything happens, I can't live like this for 20 years or 10 years. And you try and imagine, yeah, going into your bedroom, shutting the door, now you've got everything in that bedroom, but you're locked in there for the rest of 10 years. You come out every day, trying to listen, believe don't go back, don't go in prison, don't go in prison, don't go in prison. I mean, today it's it's a lot different, but I'm not really about talking about it too much about it, but in my time, it was a different kettle of fish, yeah? Prison was prison. Um, we all go to the, we all go to our main prison, to where we're going to do our sentence, and in our main prison, it's, it's mad to think that you can go to a prison like Wandsworth, uh, Brixton, the Scrubs, Pentonville, them sort of places, yeah. And you go there when I first got your, my, my sentences, my big sentences, you go to, you go there, I'm on about the 60s there, beginning of the 70s, and you go there and there's four people in the cell. It's stinking, smelling, horrible, and you've got a poo and a bit of paper chuck out the window, yeah. Four of you trying to eat in the little cell, maybe 10 by, what, 10 by 8, 12 by 8. And you're trying to, eat, and you've got two bunk beds, and you're trying to eat in there, sleep in there, do your business in there, chuck out the window, everything, yeah. People smoking, and then in them days, it used to be black. They used to smoke this uh, tobacco called black something. It was called. Obviously, you had to put at the money by Gold Virginia or Old Home. I can't remember what it was called. There was a certain tobacco that they could buy, and you'd be smoking in the cell, yeah, because you have, you know. But imagine smoking in a cell and you don't even smoke, you know what I mean? And there's three people in there smoking and you don't even smoke. Imagine that, and you've got a little window, yeah? And sometimes it's, uh, you've got pipes down the bottom, yeah? And if it's winter time, uh, the amount of heat that comes from the pipe is terrible. You just about heat the cell up, but you're freezing cold. You put all your clothes on, everything, yeah? And you're sitting around the pipe for you, freezing, literally freezing. Even when you get into bed, you're freezing cold, and there's you hardly get any bedding at all. One sheet, maybe two blankets if you're lucky, and a bedspread, which really ain't a bedspread. It's what people want to put on the floor to walk on. You know, it's like you know, and you've got to live like that for what I don't know, what twelve months, eighteen months before you get allocated to your big prison. And when you get allocated to your big prison, yeah. You go, in, you go in the van or whatever you go, 10 of you, 15 of you, go into the van to your big prison, yeah? Sometimes they drop people off of different prisons. But you go to a big prison and you go there, it's like completely different. Completely different. The screws talk to you like a human being, as if you are a human being, yeah? And they're giving you uh, different, completely different um, clothes. Not different, sunny, but spotless. Brand new, Every, nine times out of ten you get brand new stuff here, yeah, trousers, this, that, and the other, yeah. Nowadays, even in my times, you could use, you could maybe be lucky enough to, to, to have silly clothes, you know, but very often, in my times, you didn't, yeah. You still wore prison clothes, but you had people in a tailor, 
a tailor that is only plenty of money. Um, I remember a tailor in here called Jackie. <laughs> yeah, Jackie, yeah. Jackie was the one that cut his wrist and cut his legs and put wedges on the door. I Me and Johnny Barry had to jack the door off of a vernacro to get it out, yeah, because it was being transferred and fell in love with a, with, with a guy and didn't want to get didn't want to get transferred. But this guy called Jackie, long hair, uh, uh, looked like, uh, what's the name of the guy in Batman? Uh, looked like Penguin, ringer for Penguin, honestly. Long hair, little guy, but gay. And it was called Jackie. And Jackie used to work in the tailors. And Jackie was the best person to go and see to do jackets, shirts, trousers, all done by a needle and thread. You can imagine, can't you? You know, you go there and, and you've got a gaze on <laughs> measuring your trousers inside your legs and all that, do you know what I mean? But could make, could make clothes that you never, ever could imagine what they'd like. Little collars, nice, beautiful shirts, really tailored, tight, tight in. And it's allowed, you know what I mean? Until you get a white, arsty, nasty screw that didn't like it and said, you can't have that, yeah. But nine times out of ten, the ones in there were fantastic. You know, even the screw that does, that does my podcast, that does my uh, comments, he remembers that, yeah, Jackie, yeah. They all remember, now if you're saying to me, yeah, I remember Jackie. Like, Jackie was really, really good. Uh, does all the tailoring. You know, Chris, all the clothes of Chris, but it might cost you, what, might cost you, I don't know, what, 20 pound, 20 pound, 30 pound, put into the private cash, uh, or tobacco, fruit, and all that sort of thing, but, it's worth it because you go on the visit looking really crisp, looking smart. I mean, when you first get your bird and you go to these big prisons, yeah, everyone's the same, don't matter what, gangs, what gangster you are or whatever. If you go to a prison, you're no different to anybody else. You're the same person. You can be a gangster outside, one of the most violent people ever. And, you know, and, and when you go in that gate, mate, and you go for that reception, they don't treat you any different. You're treated exactly the same. So everybody, when you go in that place, everybody's the same. No one's really different. The only thing is, you get to know people you've been, not but other people, you all get to, they get together, and they all swap tea bags, coffee things, and all that, and, and you get your little bits and pieces. But nine times out of 10, when you're going proper gangsters are the same. You didn't treat the same, no different, mate. No different. So when you come on the street, you're someone, you're a gangster, you're getting all your money, you're doing whatever you're doing. When you come in prison, you're the exact same, especially in the big prisons, yeah, like Wandsworth, the Scrubs, Pentonville and Brixton. You're the same. You ain't no different, mate. You only treat, you only get you only get your 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 what is it? What did you get? That respect, yeah. Maybe months later. Or you might walk in there and know people that you know, a lot of people, the gangsters go in there that know people that know people that know people and you get your bits and pieces, but it takes a bit, it still takes time. So like uh, when you when you go on reception in these big nicks here yeah, and go to your main prison, it's it's unbelievable when you get all these clothes and you get you know it, it, everything's new, you know what I mean? And you go to your cell, there's no two up, there's no three up, no four up. It's all single cells. And you walk in that cell, you think, oh, what? The cell's like a palace. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, so when someone leaves that, when, when someone leaves a cell, yeah, in these big nicks, like I'm on about the, the nicks you do your sentences in, your big sentences in, yeah. When you leave your cell, nine times out of ten, you get your swoopers that go in your cell and take furniture out and this that now and put the old furniture back in. So when you go to the when you go when you go into these cells, um all your stuff's gone. 